We left Khalifi on the 5th of March at uh, 7 o'clock in the morning and we had 136 nautical miles sail up to Lamu which was uh, just over 24 hour sail. As what was to be expected the wind was coming from the northeast so we were beating into the wind all the way until late in the evening when the wind got lighter and uh, early in the morning it was very light winds again. We arrived in Lamu at just after 8 o'clock in the morning and we found a nice anchorage spot uh, near Shayla in between the town of Lamu and Shayla and we put on the anchor there and we had a little rest as we were quite tired from the 24 hour sail. The following morning I took a motorbike and took a ride down to Lamu, the town where I needed to go and visit the customs office to get a document for the boat called the Transair which makes the boat legal in this area for the following days that you put on the document. What you'll notice from this video is that there's only two modes of transport the one being motorbikes and that is essentially between Lamu town and Shayla and the second is donkeys and donkeys are responsible to move all the products and all the goods from Lamu all the way to Shayla and around Shayla. There are no cars whatsoever. With the formalities taken care of, we decided to go to shore and explore Shayla. Shayla is the tourist area of the Lamu district, with full of hotels, Airbnbs and BNBs um, where tourists can stay. And ironically, while we were there, there seemed to be a lot of tourists, even though this was the peak of the um, pandemic. The We're having fun with pandemic. the guy. Is it a girl or a guy? <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> Local artist made this display out of uh, 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 whale bones and the skeleton of a whale. Many of the buildings in Shayla are made with coral bricks and then the outside has um, got a coral stone that has been plastered onto the house to keep it level and obviously to give that coral effect. As um, Shayla is a very popular tourist destination, 
the amount of money that has been spent in upgrading and taking care of this place is really amazing with some amazing houses and infrastructure that's been put into place for tourism. The Peponi Hotel on Shela was established in 1967 by a Danish family and this hotel and its restaurant overlooking the sea is a well respected and well visited by tourists destination in uh, Shela. We left Shayla on the 10th of March 21 uh, at about 6.30 in the morning and we headed up to Kuwayu Island which was a 54 nautical mile sail. We arrived there at about half past four in the afternoon. As we were getting to Kauaiu late in the afternoon, our concern was the entrance because there's quite a lot of uh, reef uh, uh, in this entrance and we had to time the tides correct so that we would get through um, at the right time. We also had some local information that had uh, told us that it was safe to go on the starboard side of the rocks and make our way through that way. The drone footage you're seeing here certainly does not show the sea conditions in the afternoon when we got to this island. This video uh, in terms of the drone was early the next morning when it's always flat and there's no wind about so the sea is nice and calm. In the morning uh, when the sea was nice and calm we hopped on the dinghy and we went exploring all over the bay and looking for some places where we could jump in the water and do some snorkeling. We found one spot with some rocks and 
we basically hopped in there and we did some snorkeling to see what was going on um, under the water there. As you can see from this drone footage, this bay is enormous and it is really beautiful. Um, Pierce, who is a local Kenyan uh, resident and a sailor, was the one that recommended us to come to this place. And uh, true to his words, it really is a spectacular place. Monkeys on the beach. Well, we were driving back to the boat in the dinghy. Some local fishermen came past and wanted to sell us a yellowfin tuna. The only way to safely leave Kawayu Island is in a high tide. So we judged the tide and we left at about three o'clock in the afternoon to make our way to back to Manda Bay. Kaweu Island to Manda Bay was a 35 nautical mile sail. Luck was certainly on our side and we had barely started sailing when the lines were going mad and we pulled in this beautiful wahoo. Maya wasted no time to package the fillets. One of our concerns to go up to Kawayu Island was the security situation as it is very close to the Somali border. We were assured that the US Air Force was patrolling the area and this was the evidence. We caught this torpedo scad just before arriving at Manda Bay. Right off to the top of Manda Island in the distance you can see the building of a new port which the Chinese are building for Kenya. Once we settled down on anchor we realized that we were losing water into our bilge, fresh water that is. So on exploring to see what the problem was we found that the geyser was leaking in the uh, starboard side hull. So it's behind the bed, so we had to pull this apart to get the geyser out and block all the fittings off so that we could stop losing fresh water. In exploring the geyser, we found that there was a hole in the bottom. Just before sunset, the Manda Bay Lodge owner came across and invited us for a drink at the lodge. On the 13th of March, we sailed back from Manda Island to Lamu. This was a 17, 17 nautical mile sail.
Lamu town is the oldest uh, inhabited town in Kenya and it is believed to have been established in around 1370 by the Swahili people. Um, in 1506 the Portuguese fleet blockaded the island and forced the uh, ruler at the time, the local king, to pay a tax to the Portuguese uh, to continue living in the area. After an amazing sunset on Sunday night, the 14th of March, early the 15th of March at 6 o'clock, we raised the anchor and sailed back to Khalifi. This was a 115 nautical mile sail, another 24 hour sail. 10 nautical miles from Lamu, we stopped at Kaniki Island, put up the drone to do some filming. The tides were not right when we got back to uh, Khalifi, so we anchored on the other side of the bridge until the high tide was available, which was late that night, and then we moved the boat under the bridge and back to where we normally anchored. The next morning we took a ride with the motorbike off to the customs office, and three on a motorbike was certainly a first for me. We filled up the diesel tanks, which was 139 liters for this trip. It was once again great to be back at Khalifi um, in amongst familiar faces. If you liked this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to see further episodes of our journey.